Welcome again. In this session, we are reading John chapter 1, verses 6 through 11. We're going to be talking about the introduction to John the Baptist. We're going to be talking about the light. And we're also going to be talking about how the world was made. Okay, let's start out with verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Now again, the Hebrew name is Yochanan or Yahukanan. The same came as a witness that he might testify about the light. Now the light here is speaking about Jesus. This is the light. Jesus said, I am the light. That all might believe through him. He, that's John the Baptist, was not the light, but was sent that he might testify about the light. The true light that enlightens everyone was coming into the world. Now, Jesus said, I am the light. Now, what, is, what does light do? Light exposes things that you would not normally see in the darkness. Light instructs, okay? Light helps you see, helps you understand. So, the first thing I said was light exposes things. Now, Jesus said, uh, later on in, in the book of John here, he said, the world hates him. Okay, a stark contrast to the kind of Jesus we hear preached in a lot of churches today where, you know, a lot of preachers preach a, uh, about a Jesus that seems to be so lovable and so awesome and so that uh, the whole world would just love him. Not the true Jesus, okay? That's just uh, what I call the golden calf Jesus. It's a fake Jesus. The true Jesus said later on, and we're going to get to it in the book of John, the same, the same book we're reading, that the world hates him. The world hates him because he, he specifies exactly why. He said, because he testifies, he tells everybody that their deeds are evil, okay? This is part of the job of the light, okay? The light is to expose things that are hidden in the darkness. The light is to expose hypocrisy. And we know that Jesus did that so much, okay? That's one of his most favorite words that he used, you know, you hypocrites, you know? But the light also instructs. The light shows us things that we would not normally see, okay? The light illuminates, help, helps us to understand. And this is a lot about, you know, what Jesus did. He instructed people. He taught people about God, about the kingdom of God, okay? Let's continue. Verse 10, he, this is talking about Jesus, Yeshua, he was in the world and the world was made through him and the world didn't recognize him. What an awesome observation here that John had. The world was made through Jesus. Oh, a lot of people would say, uh, does not compute. <laughs> well, you know, we, we uh, read about it earlier that Jesus is called the Word, or the Word of God, okay? In um, John chapter 1, verse 1, John chapter 1, verse 14, and we're going to get to verse 14 again, but uh, the name of Jesus is called the Word of God. It's what God spoke. What God said is personified in Jesus, okay? Jesus is the personification of the Word of God. Put it this way. Jesus is the Word of God, the Word of God, what God actually said, what He spoke. Jesus is the Word of God in human form. Everything that God said, and I've, I've explained this earlier in another session, that when, when it says, thus saith the Lord, or God said this, you know, in quotation marks, that is the Word of God. That is what God said, okay? Another um, definition of the Word of God is what the prophets uh, write or what the prophets have communicated in prophetic form. For example, many if not all of the Psalms are prophetic, okay? They are the Word of God. It's like God actually speaking. And we talked about this before, how, you know, especially let's say, for example, Psalm 22, as you read it, you will see this is Yeshua. This is Jesus himself actually speaking word for word in Psalm 22. And in fact, all of the Psalms and every other prophetic book and every other prophetic chapter, what I mean by prophetic is when a prophet sits down and writes 
something as if God himself were speaking, okay? Moses, you know, wrote, you know, thus saith the Lord, in quotation marks. This is the word of God, okay? Not everything, of course, that's, that's recorded in Scripture is the actual words of God. We got lots of other words. We got the words of Moses. We got the words of Adam. We got the words of Job. We got the words of Peter. We got the words of Paul. But we need to discern between what is the word of God and the word of Adam, the word of Moshe, the word of Job, the word of Judas, you know, uh, and so on and so forth. That which someone actually spoke, that is their word, okay? I said this before. If you have a communication, you know, you have communication between two people and you actually write it down, you know, uh, John said this, Mary said that. Well, what's the word of John? The word of John is not everything it's written. The word of Mary is not everything that's written. The word of John is what's in the quotation marks. John said this. Well, this is the word of John. Mary said that. Well, that is the word of Mary. What John spoke is not the word of Mary. And what Mary spoke is not the word of, word of John. And take it one step further, the actual author who wrote it, the actual person who actually wrote it, okay, put it down on paper, the word of John and the word of Mary, is that's not their word either. They are recording the word of John. They are recording the word of Mary. Let's say, for example, if Thomas is the one who actually uh, was the, uh, the, the narrator or the one who actually wrote it down, the scribe, okay? So if you got a scribe who wrote, down, who wrote John's word down, it's not the word of the scribe. He recorded what John said. If you got a scribe that wrote Mary's word down, that's not the word of the scribe. That's word of what, what Mary said, okay? That is obviously um, under the presupposition that what the scribe actually wrote was accurate. Okay, that's another whole, um, that's another whole topic right there. But the word of God is Jesus, and, the, and Jesus is the word of God. And I will say this again. A lot of people think that the Old Testament is a whole lot different than Jesus. That Jesus came to bring a whole brand new thing. Not at all. Everything that Jesus said came from the old, the so-called Old Testament. Everything that Jesus said was the Word of God from the so-called Old Testament. Perhaps he expounded on some things. Perhaps he clarified some things. But he didn't add to anything. He just clarified it, defined it more. You know, he made it a little bit more clear for people to understand. He just taught from the so-called Old Testament. But Jesus is the Word of God, okay? And the Word of God, we, we learn from Genesis chapter 1, it was the Word of God that was involved in the creation of the world. God said, let there be light, and there was light. It wasn't God, it doesn't say God thought. It doesn't say that God just willed it to happen. God spoke, and it was the word that God spoke that actually did the creating, okay? This is why it says, this is why John says that he, as in the word, Jesus, was in the world, and the world was made through him. The world was made through the word of God, through Jesus, but the world didn't recognize him. What an awesome observation. Even though Jesus made the world, the world did not recognize him. Awesome point. Let's go on to verse 11. He came to his own. This is speaking about Jesus coming to the Jewish people. That was his own people. Don't forget, Jesus was 100% Jewish. He was a rabbi, okay? Jesus came to to his own, came to his own people. Continuing with that verse, it says, and those who were his own didn't receive him. First of all, Jesus created the world and the world didn't recognize him. And then it takes it a step further by saying Jesus came to his own people, not just his own creation, but a little bit more deeper than that or more intimate than that. He came to his own people and his own people did not receive him. So this is like a double rejection, okay? 
So that concludes our reading uh, for this session. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check in. And again, I pray that God gives you great revelation, opens the eyes of your understanding to understand and to see great and mighty things in the name of Yeshua. Amen.